So last night I decided not to do a live stream and I wanted to watch this interview with Kamala Harris on MSNBC. I thought this interview might have a chance to be decent to watch and worth watching. If you haven't already watched it, I strongly suggest you not to watch it. It's absolutely ridiculous. It was supposed to be a two hour long interview. It was supposed to be this epic interview. She was finally gonna sit down and ask the tough, hard hitting questions. We got a tiny bit of pushback throughout the entire debate, but not much. And there was a lot of points. There was a couple of points where even she, during the interview process, gave Kamala Harris the answer or the yes and, as opposed to just being a journalist, asking the question, allowing the person to respond to the question. And if they don't get the question 100% right, that's on them, not on you as a journalist. Your job isn't to help the interview E understand and give them answers during the interview. Your job is to see what goes on, allow things to unfold, allow for awkward moments. She didn't do that. And it's insane. I wanted to see MSNBC's five takeaways. My favorite moment of the entire, entire interview was this moment right here. It was about her working at McDonald's. Absolutely ridiculous. The first one, just a fact check. Yeah. Because your opponent there almost is no every little job. day. Okay. There's no such thing as a little job. Okay, fair, fair. <laughs> um, because your opponent almost every day seems to be talking about this. So I just want to ask you yes or no. At Thank any you. point in your life, have you served two all beef patties, special sauce, <laughs> lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, <laughs> on, on a sesame, sesame seed bun? On a sesame seed bun! She like loses it on a sesame seed button. <laughs> yes, we know the commercial. We, we know the jingle. We're all very familiar with McDonald's. Just finishing the phrase doesn't make me as a fellow person that assumes 99% of things that come out during election season are false. That this is not also a lie. She concludes I'm ask it. you yes or no. At yeah. any point in your life, uh -huh. have you served Thank you. two all beef patties, special sauce, <laughs> lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame, sesame seed, seed bun? bun, working at a McDonald's? Yes or no? That's it. I Tell have. Okay. okay. Now the other job. Now and, the other job. But it was okay. not a small job. Like, I did okay. the fries. I mean she did the fries. And you do it like this. I did the fries. Boop. I did the fries. I mean, I, you know, yes, okay, but small I did. Period. The first one. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Even if she did, who cares? You know, the McDonald's down my street makes more money than a lot of other <laughs> prominent jobs. And she was also asked about how are you going to fix the housing crisis? And this is what she said. And assistance to state and local governments around transit dollars. And looking holistically yeah. at the connection between that and housing. Exactly. And looking holistically at the incentives we in the federal government can well, create for local and state governments. That's a lot of holistic. To actually engage in planning in a holistic manner. Oh, my God. If you're playing a drinking game and the word you're using is holistic, you're absolutely hammered right now. Check yourself into a hospital. You're going to die soon. That's a lot of consumption. That's a lot of consumption. Anthony says free fries if you get the vaccine. Oh, God. Yeah, New York mayors have a track record of being terrible human beings, don't they? It's almost like a prerequisite for the job. That includes prioritizing affordable housing. And so she's going to fix the housing crisis by being more holistic in the manner. And those are some of the biggest takeaways for me. Honestly, and genuinely honestly, a lot of the answers that she gave weren't actually answers. I was like, how are you going to fix the economy? I used to be middle class. And again, no, you didn't. I don't know anyone in the middle class that has hired help to take care of their children. You're not middle class if you can afford somebody to live with you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At least in my, in my idea of middle class, that's like upper middle class or upper class. When I think middle class, I think like 
single family homes, small job, probably not going on vacation very much if you do at all because you can't afford it, but you're, you're, you can afford a home for your family, that kind of thing. But I wanted to see, I haven't even looked at this article because I'm like, I'm going to debunk and go through everything I think this article is going to be. I just saw five takeaways and I'm like, what are your five takeaways, MSNBC? Harris working class street credibility. That was the big thing. I forgot. I just, the big thing for the entire interview for me was that they made a mission to make Donald Trump and his credibility to be non-existent and that she was the more credible vote uh, person to vote for. That Donald Trump is crazy, silly, his plans aren't real, his plans are just fabricated lies, and that her plan is more set in reality. That is, was the entire point of the interview, was that they wanted you to walk away with this overwhelming feeling that, oh, Kamala Harris is full of credibility. Kamala Harris is this great candidate that we can trust and that it's a right-wing conspiracy that say that she's nuts or crazy or just loony. That was what they wanted to do the entire time. They talked about how crazy Donald Trump was, and then they, they put it on her to say, what is your real thing? Like, they talked about Donald Trump's tariffs. And what they don't understand about Donald Trump's tariffs is that Donald Trump is a businessman. He's a salesman. You have to bluff. You have to push people over the edge in order to get deals done. They don't get that. They're like, oh, he's just so flippant. He just says all these things. So the big point of that interview was working class credibility. That's insane. Ruth pointed out during the interview that most likely voters still think Donald Trump is better to handle the economy. Yes. Why would you not think that? A guy that has run businesses before? (gasps) Summon to the ground, though. (laughs) Yeah, duh. Have you ever ran a bunch of businesses? Sometimes they fail. But Harris articulated how she become, how she comes from a background that's far more relatable to the struggles of most Americans. No, you don't. Yes, Donald Trump doesn't have a relatable background to me. No. But you don't either, Kamala. You had hired help at home. <laughs> you, like, you, you aren't relatable to me in my struggles. No chance. I worked at McDonald's. It's just like, I hate these like politicians that had these jobs one time in their life. And they're like, yeah, I worked McDonald's for like a year. And I'm going to use that every day for the rest of my life so that everyone knows I know what it's like to struggle. (laughs) And you're like, shut up. It's like LeBron James talking about how hard it is to grow up. Dude, you were a multimillionaire at 18 years old. Don't tell me what it's like how about the struggle. (laughs) <laughs> like shut up shut up <laughs> some of us are still working mcdonald's <laughs> you know what i'm saying give me a politician that is still working mcdonald's and can talk about the struggle i believe him but if you've been rich your whole life or you've been montel williams side piece you're doing okay so credibility yeah right harris knows how to needle Trump subly. <sighs> Pandemic doesn't give Trump a pass on how he handled the economy. She, that was the only pushback during the entire interview was that when Kamala Harris said that Donald Trump lost tons and tons of jobs and that they had to bring them back, she said, yeah, but that was during the pandemic. And then she went on to say other things that made no sense. But that's always been the point. The economy was trashed when they took over. Duh. None of us wanted to shut down the the world. But you guys did. You lost your mind. You effed up. He also effed up by pushing a lot of that kind of stuff. So it was just an effed up time. But this idea, it's like, oh, yeah, we just totally forgot that people were losing jobs or just sitting at home collecting paychecks. We all remember that kind of stuff. You talk about jobs numbers, shut up. Harris's gut decision. That was such a stupid question. She asked her, she goes, when was the last time you made like a serious gut decision? I know like during uh, the election process, you're very calculated on everything you're doing, uh, uh, including this interview. 
No, not this interview. This one's real. When Ruth asked Harris about the most recent time she made a gut decision, she answered, probably my biggest gut decision I've made most recently is choosing my running mate. There were lots of good, incredible candidates, and ultimately, it came down to a gut decision. That's what made you choose him? Your gut? Because it certainly feels that way. Women have a reason to fear a second Trump presidency. <laughs> it was another big push. Hey, Kamala Harris won't shut up about abortion. Donald Trump isn't pro-life. And if you're on the right and you don't know that, it's time to wake up to that, huh? <laughs> the Republicans have decided that is not a winning issue. And so they have let go of it. They have let go of it. And as somebody who is pro-life, that sucks. But that ultimately is the culture in which we live in. Trump has recently boasted he will protect, be a woman's protector. And Harris, who has made abortion rights a centerpiece of her camp, she's just like, Donald Trump's like, yeah, states' rights, let people just vote on it. She's like, oh, oh no, we need to have abortion, and it needs to be my reason in which I run on. This is their entire campaign. This is Kamala Harris's entire campaign. I'm going to protect your right to kill your baby. I'm going to be the protector of that. I'm a protector of the non-protected by protecting your right to keep working that job. <laughs> kind of crazy that we live in a country with the birth rate declining drastically. People want more depression than ever. And their entire push is that freedom is you get to keep your job and keep working and make more money and give more to the government than have a family. And then they're like, well, what do we do with the birth rate? No, I don't know. We'll just allow all these migrants to come in. But Ruth questioned about Trump's statement prompted what was perhaps Harris's best line in the interview. <laughs> it's a fair and balanced. I don't think women of America need to say he's going to protect them. The women in America need him to trust them. That was not the best line. <laughs> the best line in the whole interview was this. I'm just a fact check. Because your opponent there is almost no every little job. day. Okay. There's no <laughs> such thing as a little job. No okay, such fair, thing. Fair, fair. Okay. Um, because your opponent almost every day seems to be talking about this. So I just want to ask you yes or no. Okay. At any point in your life, have you served... Two all beef patties, special sauce, <laughs> lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame, sesame seed, seed bun. bun. <laughs> working at a McDonald's, yes or no? That's it. I have. Yes. Okay. Now the other job. Now and, the other but job. But it was okay. not a small job. Like I. Yeah, it wasn't a small job. She did the fries. Okay, and then here's her talking about the economy. Go. This plan is not serious when you lay it out like that. But a serious problem over the last few years has been inflation. Luckily, it's cooling, but prices mm -hmm. are still high. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree. You said you want to take this. So what do we do with it? Huh? Is it that we lower energy prices? Lower taxes? So that it eases people's financial burdens? What do we do? Oh, I know what to do. Let's go after the corporations. Son, mm -hmm. by going after those who engage in price gouging. Yeah. Mm. But as somebody who supports free markets, who's a capitalist, how do you go after price gouging mm. without implementing price controls? Because once right, yeah, a Democrat is a free market capitalist. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Okay. We get in this zone, people start to get worried, and they say, "I don't know what she stands for." Yeah, we don't know. So, just to be very frank, I wish you would be. I am never going to apologize Thank you. for going after companies and corporations that take advantage of the desperation of the American people. And I, as Attorney General, I saw this happen. You did. In the midst of an emergency, whether it be an extreme, extreme weather event or even the pandemic, we saw it. Hurricane. Where those few companies, not the majority, not most, right. Right. but those few companies yeah. that would take advantage of the desperation of people yeah. and jack up prices. Um, yeah, I'm going to go really? after them. <gasps> yes, I'm oh. going to go after them. Oh. And that is part of a much more comprehensive plan on what we can do to bring down the cost of living, including 
housing, including the everyday needs of the American people. His plan. <sighs> Her plan is to go after corporations, which in turn will make them go away. And then we no longer have corporations. And then we just have state run funded grocery stores. Oh, that's just an ex I love that her example for how she's going to fix the economy and inflation is completely based on an emergency like situation. So you think it's an emergency right now? Is that what you're saying? You think right now we're in an emergency, Kamala? Huh, interesting. Weird that you would feel that way. Because I thought you would think that everything was perfect because people are voting for you because they enjoy the last three years. So your job is to go after the corporations. Got it. Hmm. Okay. We are f Okay, guys. We are totally screwed. Everything is just going to be just great. God. I don't think Donald Trump is, like, perfect. I don't think, I, I don't know how much better her life's going to be, but I do know one thing. I do not trust her. And I think that she is dumb enough to make things way worse based on the premise that she wants immediate relief at the beginning. So have a wonderful day. <laughs> oh my God.